you know, this is extraordinarily hard. It, somebody said uh, the future is simultaneously just around the corner and way farther out than we think. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard to, to, to figure out a timeline, isn't it? It is. Um, but again, I, that's why you don't, like we would, we get asked all the time for, for companies to like, tell us what this looks like in a hundred years. And that's a, it's a to and I tell them like, I could, but that's a, I'm not going to be right. And that's a big waste of your money. And we're all going to be dead anyway. <laughs> you know, so, um, so, so just, you now, can make up anything. <laughs> well, you know? conversely, so Stanford has a really good hundred year AI project, but that's different. They're not saying in 2017, what AI will look like in 2117. They're saying, we want to study this over a long period of time. Yeah. People will die in the process, right? Because wow. they'll get old. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna release information and we're gonna commit to, to really studying this. So the, that's a this is different. Um, yeah, and it's a great and and uh, I strongly recommend everybody watching and listening to, uh, to to read what's there. It's very smart stuff, and you don't have to be a computer scientist to understand it. You can Google um, uh, AI one hundred and find it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good project. Um, so anyhow, yeah, and after, so you, you figure out timing and you're looking at things like um, where, how is the technology developing, but you're looking at these external events. And once you've sort of figured that out, then the next step is the fifth step, which is the fun part that everybody associates with futurists, which is come up with all the crazy scenarios for how this might unfold. For us, um, we do this, in a, and I explain this in great detail in the book, um, we do this using different, what I call emotive framings. So if you're feeling optimistic, uh, pragmatic, pessimistic, or catastrophic, um, let's come up with all the different ways that we see this unfolding. And, you know, we may wind up with a hundred different scenarios, for example. We just keep going until we've exhausted all, all possibilities. And we're looking at, you know, what is possible, uh, what is plausible, you know, meaning um, further out in time, lots more questions, but we're not breaking the laws of nature. But then we say laws of nature break all the time. Right. Uh, the, turns out the world's not flat. Turns out we have gravity. So who am I to say that teleportation, that my body can't dis disintegrate and reappear somewhere else 100 years from now? You know, I don't know. Um, so, so we even make those those sorts of scenarios, um, and then and then we assign probabilities again based on evidence and data. <sighs> it's so, but okay. So you're so you're exactly diligent. Sure. <laughs> well, but again, I'm not. My job is not to stand on a stage somewhere and delight and awe people no, with crazy. This is you know, so this, not Ted. <laughs> well, no, but but again, like this, you have this takes work. But if you do it, you're making smarter decisions. Yes. And I know it's a pain in the ass to go through all but the no, steps. I, but you know, I don't but, know if it's completely a pain in the ass. It's, I think each step is fun. It just seems like the first step is the hardest because you've got just got to gather yeah. a lot of information. And and as right. you say, you can't just read the summary. You need to read the whole article. That's right. But I will tell you, I have been wrong once in my entire career doing this, and that and the the only thing that I've ever been wrong about had was NFC. And uh, the mistake that I made was misinterpreting some patents and some agreements that I had read. I thought that NFC was going to be in the iPhone 4. And um, we told a client, I'm, you know, I feel like there's a high probability of, of NFC being in the iPhone 4, you know, and in that case, and we, we always say there's possibilities for error. Right. And in that case, I was wrong and the client made an investment and that was a mistake. Uh, that I caused. <laughs> wow, so, you're taking a lot of responsibility. I would have just glossed that one over, put that one under the rug. Well, but but by the way, it should have been in the iPhone 4. Should and have you, it was hard to predict Apple's recalcitrance over NFC. And to this day, they still uh, do not give NFC its full due, in my opinion. But that's, I mean, there's one thing to read the reports, and I guess the patents might have told you what Apple's, where Apple's baleful gaze was pointed. But you also can't predict humans, and there's emotions in this. It's a little less, since Steve's gone, it's not so, probably so emotional. But when Steve was doing this, and he was at this time, uh, you didn't, he could, tomorrow he could say, yeah, I don't think so. On no right. basis at all. And how are you going to know that? So that is the answer to the question. Why do, 
you know, we live in a world with AI. Why don't we just have an algorithm make all these predictions? Yeah. Uh, Cause we're cause I get, I, that's right. Well, because humans are capricious yeah. and, um, we oftentimes act out of emotion and something as stupid and simple as NFC should be in the, you know, there should be, should have been an NFC in the phone for whatever reason it wasn't, but it probably had more to do with Steve. people than yeah. technology. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It should have been in the phone. <laughs> I would have I would have bought into that right away.